Welcome to Capital Hill Mixtape, presented by RIAA. I'm your host, Tom Cleese. Welcome to Capitol Hill Mixtape. I'm your host, Tom. And before we get started today, I just wanted to say that this is probably the perfect time to wear a band or venue t-shirt to work every day while you're in your Zoom home. So today I'm going to give a shout out to Black Cat in Washington, D.C., uh, which is selling t-shirts where the proceeds go to members of their staff. I'm sure that wherever you are, there's a venue that needs help and some bands who probably have some merch that they would love to sell. This is a great time for you to have cool shirts, look cool, and make sure that artists are still able to do what they do. So with no further ado, uh, our guest today is the congressman from Florida, Mr. Ted Deutsch. He's a longtime friend of the music industry, somebody who's been uh, always there for us and is always uh, interested in talking about the music that has made his life what it is. Congressman, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, it's great to be with you. I'm sorry that I wasn't cool enough to remember to wear a, a, a concert shirt or a venue shirt, something with a band. Sorry, next time. Next time. And there's always an opportunity. So if you don't mind me asking, like, yeah. do you have a, a favorite band shirt that you bust out for occasions like this? Um, I actually I, I have. I can't believe I brought it up because I knew you'd follow up. Um, I have some old school shirts. I mean, my favorite right now, most recent is my Jazz Fest shirt from New Orleans, the last Jazz Fest pre-pandemic and we're we're waiting for the next one but um i i am known to have maybe an old school uh tom petty shirt floating around um i got a uh there's a good stone shirt but i'll break those out next time we'll definitely bookmark that and remind you <laughs> congressman well, while we're getting started could you start by just telling us a little bit about how you got into public service and the music that will always remind you of that time i got into public service first uh, I, mean, I was always involved in the community, but I've always loved politics. I've been working on campaigns pretty much my whole life. Uh, I worked on um, on Joe Biden's campaign, not this one, although I worked really hard to elect him now and not the last one. But uh, I was on the 88 Joe Biden campaign as a young college kid and um, uh, got to got to meet then Senator Biden, thought that was really cool. And um, that didn't work out, but made some relationships and kept going and one campaign after another and, and involvement in the community one way or another. And before you knew it, um, 2006 rolled around and I had a chance to run for state Senate and um, wasn't sure what to do. There was a, a popular, really popular incumbent state rep who was running. Uh, but I, I did get into your question. I listened to Land of Hope and Dreams uh, by Springsteen about a dozen times in a row and decided you know what, if I have the opportunity to take a shot at this, nobody really thinks I can win anyway, but maybe I, I can be that, uh, you know, that good companion for people in public life and try to help make their lives better. And it worked out. It definitely worked out. And that's a really good answer, by the way. Um, you know, everyone has their pump up jams and sometimes they're not jams that necessarily most people would think they would be pump up jams, but like that is a perfect song for that uh, time in your life. So let's flash forward a little bit. You know, you're a member of Congress. You're a member of Congress during some of the craziest times that any of us can recall. Um, you know, all the major political events of the last year. Is there a song that's helped you get back into that headspace uh, to go out and, and face the craziness? Um, well, there are. I mean, there are a bunch of songs. I'm. Um, uh, I'm. I'm big. I really like the blues, and and so I. I love Gary Clark Jr. Um, I love the the. I love Stevie Ray. I love Albert Collins and sort of the old Chicago style stuff. And so that's really good just to, to um, blast into my headphones. And then there's the, you know, there are the songs that with all of the madness, you gotta, you gotta turn it down and um, sort of at a completely different, totally different vibe. Uh, I love, I love the song rainbow by Casey Musgraves um, during, especially during some of the really dark times we've had lately. I, 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 um, um, with some of the challenges that we have, some of my colleagues, especially uh, that Tim McGraw song, Humble and Kind, I play a lot just to sort of get back in it. And then if I'm out there doing my thing, um, I, I love the song. Uh, I love I love Demi Lovato generally. Am I allowed to say that? But I, I love this. I love the song Confident. And um, that's that's one that I I uh, that's a go to as well. It's kind of a big range, I guess. But, you know, that's what's. That's what's on my phone. 
I think we've all had a range of emotions over the last year. And I think that's completely allowed. That's one of the fun things about it is that, you know, if somebody asks you to make a, a playlist for them, uh, they may ask for five songs and you'll come back with 10 or 15. Um, but that's fantastic. So uh, last thing I'll ask you before we let you go, is there anything, you know, putting music to one side, even putting politics to one side, if you want to, is there something that you are working on right now that's a labor of love that you want to tell people about? I do, as you kindly pointed out at the beginning. Uh, I mean, I care a lot, care a lot about music and the people who make it. I, um, I'm sort of a, a wannabe. I, I played piano my whole life and played some other instruments and was never really, not, never really good enough to, to be in a band. But now that I'm a member of Congress, some bands let me sit in on keyboards, which is pretty cool. But um, I, I have such respect for really talented, all the really talented people in the industry. And so we've we've tried awfully hard to make sure that as we're getting through COVID, um, that we're we're helping to make sure that independent contractors in the first package could get what they needed um, to to get through the really tough time. We worked really hard to make sure that the venues, which which we all are so desperate to get back to, um, are going to be there for us when uh, when we're all ready to get back to live music. So that's a labor of love. Although I that actually reminds me, um, I was at. Um, and because it goes back to your question about songs and I hadn't really thought about this one much, but I was in um, Nashville, uh, obviously pre pandemic and um, had a chance to, to go to the bluebird, uh, which is this, you know, this awesome live venue and these songwriters come out and they tell their, their stories. And I, I got to chat with this guy, um, Kendall Marvel, who's a, who's a really talented Nashville songwriter. And, and uh, I didn't, I wasn't, I'll admit, wasn't really sure what he had written before we got there. I had a really nice chat with him beforehand. And then they do their thing where they go around telling stories about their songs. And it was his turn. And he said, you know, I know there's a congressman here. He said, and I, I want to dedicate the, the next song I wrote. It was a big hit for, for Trace Adkins. I still, I didn't know what, where he was going. He said, I think it'll be helpful to, for him sometimes. And then play the... Um, I don't know, maybe not that famous song, but something that is clearly now in in my world. Uh, he wrote a song called Whoop a Man's Ass Sometime. And getting back to your question, like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that's a, go, a good go to when you realize that maybe not everyone in our case knows how important the, the music industry is, knows how important uh, the creators are to, to make our lives better and help us get through this time. And, and sometimes you got to plow through them and, uh, and, and show them, show them how to do it along the way. And we've tried to do that and hopefully it's, it's done some good. You know, I, you said it better than any of us could. Um, and we thank you and your colleagues so much for all of the work that you've done for the entire creative community. This has been such a trying time for all the venues that are shuttered, for the artists who haven't been able to do their, you know, apply their craft and put food on their tables. Um, and everything that Congress has done to provide relief has been so critical. So from the bottom of my heart and our hearts, thank you so much. Um, thank you for whooping ass on every occasion that you possibly have. <laughs> thank uh, you for all, following up on that. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, when, when all of us can do that, we're going to have to get you on the keys at the RIAA soundstage, which is just a few feet to my right. But unfortunately, it's been dark for too long. So uh, everyone, Ted Deutsch, thank you so much for all of your help. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for watching Capitol Hill Mixtape. I'm Tom, and we'll see you again soon.